Hey everyone, it's Carly Hero, and welcome back to Pensive Town 2005 Crystal Drive. We're actually nearing the end of this series after many, 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 many years. So, up left are the Survival Singles Tournament, Spirit of Hardcore, which we'll be doing last. Then next, there is going to be an Ultimate Teams, Ultimate Mix Match Tournament that should show up here. Um, and I'm assuming that'll happen after I finish this next tournament here, which is the Ultimate Trial Singles Tournament. So let's go ahead and hop right into that. Uh, in addition to that, I went ahead and I took a look to see which characters we were missing, like what characters I haven't used in an episode yet. Surprisingly, there are a few of them, but I have, for example, finished all of Segaku, St. Rodolfo, Yanbuki Chu for the most part. I only use Sengoku in a Trial Singles. And I've used all Hyote because we focused an entire season on them. Meanwhile, we are missing Tachibana, who I thought I did an episode with, but apparently I did not. Not that I could find. I can be wrong about that. And we also haven't done anything with Kurumane, who I just unlocked, I think, this season. And then finally, there's two here, because uh, there's Mizuki, who I've had for like ever, <laughs> and I've just never used. And then there's Neo, who I just unlocked recently off screen. Um, there's a couple here in the others, but I haven't finished even unlocking all of the others, so I'm not even gonna talk about that now. But in any case, today we're actually gonna be using ourselves not one, not two, not even three, but rather four Tachibanas here to get through this next tournament. Now, I could go ahead and actually use multiple of those characters that I just listed just to cross them off. But, um, I don't really switch around when it comes to these tournaments, I just stick to the one character, so it's just easier for me to just pick the same one. We're gonna go up against a Segaku-based team here. And, yeah, it might be the case where there's some characters just you don't get to see in play, which is more than likely going to be the case, since I have several characters, such as, uh, all the ones that I'm going to unlock that uh, we're not going to be able to do in time. So that's just how it's going to be. So this is basically going to be just like the ultimate single sorbet for the most part. Um, it's going to be a little bit easier because Taka is, you know, really low when it comes to like speed and whatnot. But um, he does have, you know, the advanced AI that all the other opponents we face have. But of course, single is way easier to deal with because I don't have to coordinate with another player who is computer controlled and my opponent doesn't have two amazing characters on the other side as well. So we might be able to get through this relatively easily. It might even be the kind of thing where I can actually go back to doing, you know, two um, rounds in one episode. I started doing that this season just to sort of like cut down on the amount of videos for this that I put out and just because some of them are kind of samey. Uh, so rather than just uploading a bunch of crap in between, uh, I figured I'd just, you know, try to cut out some of the fluff, make it a little bit more concise. But, uh, sometimes <laughs> that isn't possible, like what happened with Ultimate Doubles last time, which was a nice little throwback to how things used to be. But I'm thinking for the Ultimate, uh, not Ultimate Teams, because that might actually be as easy as this, because I'll probably throw all the Doubles games, we'll see what happens. And then, uh, you know, finish up with singles, which should just be this, just with way less score for me to worry about. Uh, unless they make it into, like, full games, which I doubt. I would have expected, like, an iron tour an iron play or something like that to do that. I uh, don't know, we'll see. Or maybe, like, iron play. Uh, there's one of those tournaments that was, like, crazy. I think it's like, the maximum overkill ones. Where you have to play, like, a crazy number of, like, sets. Um, but I don't think that happens in these ultimate games, so we should be fine. Yep, unfortunately that does somewhat force you to get out. I should try maybe a drop shot. Maybe that'll balance it out. Wow, that went by really fast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so for this and the next tournament, I think we'll do the two-episode format. And then following that, we'll end things off with a bang with Spirit Hardcore, which I know is going to take forever. 
Uh, we'll split that up into four episodes, one for each round, but it, um, I will definitely be very liberal with it and cut a lot in between, because it is going to be very difficult, uh, since I'm going to be using Sakura whenever it is that I get her, so that video might, that, that whole tournament might take a while to come out, to be honest. Let's go ahead and use one of our specials here, which I believe is like a super high speed topspin. Um... I think he also has a serve special, and that's about it. Tachibana doesn't really- he doesn't really play much in the series, and he doesn't really do much in his game in terms of specials, but uh, the specials he does have are pretty solid. Ooh, fuck you. <laughs> With your drop nonsense. Uh, I think that was the one where he drops it and it lands on the other side of the court. And the only plausible move that he has. But, yeah, Spirit of Hardcore is going to be crazy tough. So it's going to be four episodes. And I'm going to do a lot of cuts in between because it's going to be a massive, um, like each round <laughs> is several sets, if it's anything like the previous ones, which I'm assuming it's going to be. I can't believe I've done two survival singles tournaments already. <laughs> I barely remember that. I remember the first ones, but that's about it. I guess he doesn't have a serve special. Oof, that sucks. I was a little bit too off. Because right now I'm at max gauge, but uh, can't really do anything. Let's go ahead and use our top spin here. Yep, there we go. My camera that actually went through. I don't know why it is that singles is so much easier. My, I mean, my assumption is just because yeah, there's not two computer characters for me to compete against, and I haven't to just blankly rely on a, my own partner to like do stuff. Um, but there's also like you know the whole fact of court coverage, like. Uh, I can cover the court probably a little bit better than my computer, which I find hard to believe. My computer opponent here, but... They aren't really doing too much. There we go. Um... But I think it just probably just comes down to stats for this one, so if they were to switch over to... Maybe Fuji? I don't know. He, I think, is a lot more well-wounded out of the gang they've got there, because it should be Fuji and Momoshido, from what I remember. Momo is just a little more agile than uh, Taka here, so I don't think it'll be much of a difference. But in general, <laughs> the ultimate style uh, singles matches are way easier to deal with than a doubles one. Here it comes again. Let's see if I can do a drop for this. Uh, that might have worked. It didn't go as high as before. And I've, uh, I haven't been doing as many of my special shots as... Uh, for my special shots, I just mean like different strokes, not so much my actual specials. That's not good. He's not even near the ball. Oh, he's gonna move into it. Gotcha. <laughs> wow. So I guess that's a. Well, that's one of those things you have to do from far away. It seems okay. Well, let's might as well jump into this. Whoops. All right, that sucks. Great way to go into an awakening mode. I see. Uh, let's see if anything happens if I press it with B. Nope, nothing happens. Alright, so it's just A and that's it. Usually I look up how to use these uh, abilities, but I haven't for this one. So we're going to try and go in a little bit blind. That seems a little different than the other one. So you might have like either a return and serve one or a baseline one or something of that sort. Either way, let's just go ahead and smash through this. Tachibana's stats are pretty clean, even without the Awakening Mode. But he is supposed to be... Uh, technically, <laughs> one of the better players in the whole game. Uh, or, I shouldn't say game, the series. Because he is the captain, and I remember they're making a big hoopla about him and his team, because they're like... They're like a dark horse, and they're kind of like the... Unexpected team that turned out to be really good, and then... You know, Tachibana is like one of their best players, and he like... Can go head to head with Esco or something around those lines. I don't. Again, I don't remember the specifics. I haven't watched the series or read the series in many years, but that is why he is pretty good in this game. Um, but he also does not get a lot of screen time, which is why he doesn't really have a lot of moves. Which is strange because there's a lot of characters that you don't even see in the series play, and they've got some like wild set of moves, which I'm assuming is either all from the manga or they just. You know, the creators took some very wild liberties when it came to that. Well, why am I pissed? <laughs> what was that about? Uh, I don't know what that was. I think that was just a drop shot. I didn't really do anything. It might have been one of the fake outs. Unfortunately, Fuji here is coming back. As I mentioned, he is a lot more well-rounded, even though his stats 
Uh, him being supposedly the second best player in um, Segaku is always kind of funny to me because he's not very good. <laughs> and he loses most of his matches, or, or maybe he doesn't. I would think picture he loses most of his matches, but he doesn't really have a great time in this series. Uh, he was kind of just there to have those weird moves of his, his weird counters. But uh, other than that, he uh, doesn't do much other than like serve as a nice little roadblock or stepping stone for Ryoma. Alright, here we are at match point. I actually had a good back and forth with Fuji there, uh, where he actually took a game from us, or I should say... Yeah, game. I was gonna say a set, but I was like, no, that's not right. Uh, having this very interesting match with, um, or this game with Momo here, who's finally come out as, I guess, their closer. It's been kind of interesting because whenever I go for my, like, lob special, he immediately counters it with his lob defense special, so it's kind of funny that he actually immediately defaults to that. Wow. I don't know how I missed that last ball there. I could have swore I was there and I swung at it, but alright. I guess we're going in for another game here. Which is funny because I was, you know, we're having some decent back and forths, but then I was sort of like closing out the game and coming back, and then uh, somehow as soon as I started talking, lose every point in a row. So that's that's nice. Uh, but the Fuji games were funny because he started using a bunch of his specials and I just started smashing it on him anyways. Um, but then he just kept spamming them at, at one point and just constantly using like his, uh, his serve special and all that other stuff, and then he finally started taking away points and winning a game, so... Right, let's see if he does it this time. Yep, there we go. And it is going to be the super special mega ultra shot. There we go. That sucks. Uh, I've noticed also that Tachirana, for some reason, whenever you, uh, your opponent, I should say, not you, whenever your opponent taunts, he gets the little angry markers on his head, which is kind of funny. Uh, I don't know if that's some sort of character quirk from the series that I might have forgotten, but uh, that is very interesting. So I think that move is just a return of serve. No, I think I've done it without serving, but it um, it's the move that I've been trying to do instead of the lob, because I don't want this guy to counter it into his special, but now that we know that, I guess it, or now that I'm assuming it's return of serve, uh, it's a very good move, because it's very, very fast, hard return of serve. Uh, that's going to do it for the first round of the U1 tournament, or the Ultimate Trial Singles tournament. Whatever you want to call it. I got a lot of Smash Aces. Um, almost as many special shots as my opponent. I had one more, which is nice. They had, of course, a super special shot, which I never do. I actually learned how to do... Um... What's his name? Or I forget, I blanked out on his name. The guy that we were using in the previous tournament, the Ultimate Doubles tournament. The guy I was using. I was actually fi figured out how to use this special shot in one of the um, catch-up games that I had to do in between because I think I lost like two games and I had to play to catch up um, off screen. And uh, it was just really funny because not only do you have to press the things in order, but to even activate it you have to be in the right spot. A lot of different players have different activations. So like as you saw from Momo, his activates on a lob, which is kind of ridiculous that you expect your opponent to do a lob for you just to do a, a special move. But for the guy I was playing on, I think it was you had to be at the, you had to be at the net. And uh, I don't know what other requirements it was, but yeah, that was kind of silly. And uh, Kamu here is going to be very, very difficult. All right, sorry about that. I had some construction being done in the basement of my home, which resulted in a whole bunch of gross, uh, loud hammering and drilling and all this other stuff coming up on the audio, so kind of had to snap cut <laughs> into where we are now. Uh, we're actually 3-1, as I was uh, trying to say. Uh, Kamui is going to be... or... yeah, Kam Kamui. <laughs> keep mixing it up with the uh, Vanguard character. He is going to be a very difficult opponent to face because he does have the high speed and on this difficult level it does make it kind of hard to actually compete against. Come on, we'll see if we can get through this. For the most part, no one's really giving me a lot of trouble through this round, which is, uh, as always is very much appreciated, but I've... Uh, I had a little bit of trouble with that move just because you always have to hit it before it lands. And once it lands, it like pops up and runs away really fast. 
But uh, if you get it before it lands, then you're in a pretty good spot. And you know. Um, eventually I can get back into my groove and then start getting the game, all, game going. And it would be great if uh, we could have the opponent switch to Tetsu. Which makes this really easy. There it goes, yeah. Didn't make it in time. Which makes this uh, super, super easy. Uh, just because he's basically Taka uh, in that he moves like uh, a turtle. Because <laughs> he can't really cover the court very well, which is very nice. And uh, basically allows me to get a bunch of free easy points. But uh, I can't complain too much. We are ahead and we will hopefully, with this return ace here, get ourselves into game four. Um, or four one, I should say. Not so much game four, because this is like what game? This gets us into game uh, six, <laughs> technically. But yeah, there's the man. I figured that that would happen. I figured if you like beat up a character for long enough, they will more than likely just switch to a different character. Don't know why you're popping that up for me, but alright, buddy. <laughs> uh, I seem to be able to, like, I don't know if it's because. Not that that would make sense, that Shimano is, like, tall. But yeah, I just seem to be able to get a lot of smashes more often than usual. Maybe that's just, like, something that's always happened throughout the entirety of this series and me playing it. And I've only just now realized that. But, um. That seems to be the case in this match specifically, and he's just throwing a lot of lobs. Uh, I know he was trying to do some sort of like drop shot kind of thing to pull me in close and then hit me with a lob, but then he just defaulted to only using the lob, which was <laughs> kind of counterintuitive. But uh, nonetheless, let's see if we can finish this up here now that it is 5-1. And uh, we actually do have enough gauge to use our uh, return. Oops. Getting a little bit too soon there. Our return ace special here, but we will hold on to that until we really need it, which will hopefully just be for the game point in like a game or, or a point or two, I should say. And uh, honestly, I know I haven't looked up any of Tachibana's abilities, but I literally think. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Interesting. Oof. Forgot that knocks you down. I, he's a very odd character because he just only has those two abilities. But I, I believe he has a third one, which is one of those like weird activation ones. It might be like a net play one, but uh, oh, damn it. I can press that too soon or too late. I'm not really sure. The timing on that move is a little weird sometimes. Cause I guess I'm confusing it with some of the other specials where you have to hit it as soon as the opponent serves. But uh, this one, you just you just hit it. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, like a normal move, which is good. But in any case, we're going to go ahead and very handily make it through the ultimate trial singles tournament here. Not as many smash aces as the first one, but just as many return aces. And we've even got ourselves less special shots than our opponent. Uh, I guess they count um, Kamui's taunt where he like goes really fast and he gets into a rhythm as a special shot but in any case take care of yourself